Hello everyone, I'm Keenan presenting Fast and Feature Complete Differential Physics for Articulated Rigid Bodies with Contact. Many challenges in robotics end up being cast as optimization problems. What is the best open loop control for my robot? What are the best parameters for my policy? What are the physical parameters of my environment that would best explain my sensor data? Most optimization problems in robotics involve physics engine time steps in the definition of either the loss function and or the constraints. The trouble is the physics engines that are rich enough to simulate real robots tend to also be non-differentiable. That means that we often either resort to gradient-free optimization methods to solve our problems, or we approximate gradients and Jacobians using finite differencing. Both of these methods are slow and noisy. To provide faster and more accurate gradients, we'd like an analytically differentiable physics engine. Ideally, though, we don't want to sacrifice anything that's great about existing non-differentiable physics engines. Specifically, we'd like to maintain the support for complex robotics tasks, we'd like the engine to be very fast, we'd like it to be open source, and we'd like it to be easy to install and use, especially for researchers who are not physics engine experts. To attempt to satisfy these criteria, today we're presenting an open source fork of the Dart physics engine, which supports end-to-end -end analytical gradients in handout from IC++. We're calling it Nimble. You can find documentation and examples at nimblephysics.org. We hope Nimble's Python API feels extremely familiar to researchers who have used popular physics engines like PyBullet and Dart in the past. You can install it with pip install Nimble Physics. Just like other engines, you can load robots from URDF files or a number of other common file formats. And then you can use our differentiable time step function called time step with PyTorch tensors as inputs and outputs. And that's it. Feel free to interleave neural network components and physics simulation steps in any order and configuration you desire. And the gradients will flow unobstructed through your whole computation graph. Nimble supports multiple articulated rigid bodies, hard contact constraints, and lots of collider types. It's fast, open source, and we've made a large effort to make it easy to use, and we hope that you feel that it is. So how fast is it exactly? The speed up of using Nimble's analytical gradients relative to finite differencing grows as the robots increase in complexity. On an Atlas robot, we achieve a single core speed up of 88 times over finite differencing. Even on a simpler robot, like the half cheetah from OpenAI Gym, we achieve a speed up of 22x. It's worth emphasizing that this is all on the single core of the CPU, uh, so you can still embed Nimble within a larger parallel optimization architecture, since we don't hog all of your CPUs in order to achieve this performance. So how do we achieve these kind of performance gains? Obviously, we get a good constant factor from using reasonably efficient C++. But the biggest algorithmic improvements are our novel derivation for getting gradients through the contact LCP in a way that exploits sparsity. I don't have time in the spotlight talk to go into all the math, but we can briefly describe the intuition here and hopefully whet your appetite to read more about it. So let's imagine we've got a ball experiencing acceleration due to gravity. Now we place a floor underneath our ball. Our physics engine's contact solver, which uses an LCP to find contact forces, will solve for a contact force between the ball and the ground. It'll end up finding a contact force that exactly cancels out gravity, so the ball is perfectly resting on the floor. Now suppose we add an infinitesimally small epsilon force to our ball in the same direction as the contact force. What happens? Intuition says the ball is still going to be resting on the floor because some infinitesimally small force is not going to be enough to overcome gravity. It turns out that's what the math says too. The contact solver's LCP will just slightly reduce the contact force between the ground and the ball by exactly the magnitude of epsilon, and the ball's acceleration will still be zero. This is actually kind of a profound observation because it means that the gradient of the contact acceleration with respect to perturbations in applied force parallel to the contact direction is zero. In the paper, we call contacts in this state clamping because from a gradient perspective, the contact is basically a rigid clamp due to the LCP. If we change the setup and have the ball touching the ceiling with gravity pulling it away from the ceiling, how does our logic change? Suppose again, we add our infinitesimally small epsilon force. There is no force between the ceiling and the ball to begin with, and there is no force created by our epsilon, so nothing changes to counteract our force. That means that the contact acceleration does actually change slightly, which means that the gradient of contact acceleration with respect to applied force in the contact direction is not zero in this case. In the paper, we call contacts in this state separating. It turns out we can generalize this kind of intuition to extremely complex scenarios with multiple articulated rigid bodies and lots of hard contacts and with extensions to friction. The big idea is that clamping contacts will have a zero gradient along the contacts and separating contacts basically just disappear for the sake of gradient computations. This gives us a lot of sparsity that we can exploit. From here, there's still a fair amount of algebra to do, but you've gotten the big idea. We have lots of other contributions in the paper that I didn't have time to discuss, like gotchas around how to approximate gradients of continuous time collisions, or how contact normal gradients and smooth surfaces interact, um, and a bunch of other interesting problems, so make sure you check out the paper. And definitely visit nimblephysics.org and give Nimble a try. Thanks for watching.